fast and super light racing shoe, which can definitely help you tackle some of the strama segments out there. But a lot of people have love and hate relationship with this shoe. Let's find out why. Aloha, this is Nando from Hungaro Explorer and Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you guys are gonna have an amazing, adventurous, fun 2024. And today, my first video of the year is gonna be a review about the Hokazinal 2. I know, this shoe was released last summer in 2023, but I picked up one around my birthday in November and uh, I had time to really test this out and I really wanted to share all my thoughts with you guys. There is a lot of people out there who love this shoe, there is a lot of people to hate it and I really wanted to find out why. But before we get into the review, I just want to say this shoe wasn't provided with my, any company, I bought this with my own money from this local store Yuloha here in Oahu, Hawaii. The only reason I picked up the Zinatu because it doesn't look like a typical Hoka shoes. I'm not a big fan of the typical Hoka trail runners. But when I saw this and tried them on, I said, ooh, this is interesting. I did try them out for the last two months and I have to say, I really like them. The Hoka Zina 2 features a lightweight breathable polyester mesh upper. The stretch knit color helps keep the breeze off your shoes, features a compressed molded EVE midsole for a more closer to the ground feel. The outsole is vibrant mega grip with light based construction and the 5mm lugs add extra traction on all type of surfaces. The heel height of the shoe is 30mm and the forefoot height is 25mm which results in a 5mm drop. The weight is 7.4 ounce or 209 grams on a men's size 9. Hawaii is a perfect test ground for these trail runners I feel like because we have not just the rainy and muddy jungle terrain but we have the dry technical rocky terrain. Both of those terrains are pretty rugged and then they are pretty hard on uh, trail runners but it's always just a great time to go out with a pair of new trail runners and then cruise and see what they can handle. The upper of the shoe is very interesting. It has the recycled polyester mesh and with some TPU reinforcements around. The one-piece gusseted tongue and knit color area, it's a pretty good idea to have a one-piece upper. But what I feel like that the heel lock, it's not as good because of the knit color. And I feel like my feet is moving in it uh, while running which is not too bad but it could be better i think the fit of the shoe is one of the reasons why people just don't like these uh, hoka shoes it's very different than the other hokas it has a more race ready feel to it and then when you put your feet in it yes it's snug but i think that's a really important part when you do a racing shoe you have to feel snug in it you cannot just feel all that comfort you want to just run and go fast with it and the hoka zinal is definitely one of those shoes you put them on you run you finish your race, you take them off, that's it. In the back it actually has a little pull tab because uh, it's kind of hard to get into this shoe. It feels like a pair of socks but it's pretty tight so you definitely are uh, using this uh, heel tab most of the time when you put on your shoes. To cut weight, Hoka decided to ditch the old Profly uh, midsole which one was used in the other Hoka Zinal and they use a lighter weight, a more compressed EVA midsole which is actually more responsive and give you a more close to the ground feeling which I really enjoy. Another reason why I think uh, people just don't like this shoe is the comfort. You know, when you think about the Hoka shoes, you always think about the comfort. You, you think about this big stack height, plush, very comfy shoe. But the Hoka Zinato is not exactly that. It has a less stack height. It doesn't have a rock plate actually. So if you run on technical rocky terrain, you can feel the rocks after a long time. So yes, it might be not as comfortable, but this shoe is made for a different reason. It's made for racing, made for shorter distances. I love to run with this uh, all technical terrain. All my runs with this shoe are between four to 10 miles. I didn't run anything more than 10 miles and around eight, nine miles, if I'm running on a very rocky terrain or very technical terrain, I start feeling more and more fatigue in my legs. It is more of a short distance, fast trail runner. Whenever I take this shoe out, want it or not, my legs just start going and I always find myself uh, doing a personal record, a PR, or I find myself 
on the leaderboard of some Strava segments. So yeah, one of the things I really love about the Zinar 2 is the traction. The traction is pretty awesome. They use the Vibram Mega Grip Light Base traction with 5 mm logs and that definitely helps out here in Hawaii with all kinds of surfaces. I tried this Hokas out in uh, muddy terrain and it performed pretty well. Not in super muddy terrain, but uh, I predict that in very muddy terrain it might not be enough. I was actually very surprised in technical, very steep terrain how well this uh, traction worked and I was super happy with it because I wasn't expecting that it's gonna be that good. I see some people say that uh, they are not as good on technical terrain. I don't believe that. I think they are really performing super well in technical terrain. The Hoka Zinato is the lightest trail runners I ever ran in and that might come to the price of durability but at the moment I cannot say anything bad about the shoe. I don't have any durability problems. Hawaii life expectation of the trail runners are between 250 and 300 miles and I think this is gonna make it at least to 250 maybe not to 300 but definitely 250 so it's good. So if you look at the price of the shoe is $160, which is not too expensive for a race shoe. I think uh, it, it's a pretty well priced shoe. Uh, definitely not as expensive as the Hoka uh, Tecton X3, which is about $225 but that's already a different realm with the carbon plate and everything. So the big question, who is Hoka Zinal 2 for? Well, Hoka Zinal 2, it has a very small niche of runners I think it can accommodate. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone would love this shoe in their everyday running. And it's not, basically it's probably not for an everyday runner. It's more of people who wants to do their speed workout in this shoe, who likes to do shorter trail runs, but who likes to go fast. Or if you wanna go for those Strava segments or you wanna be in the leaderboard, yeah, these are. This is a good pair of shoe for that. I'm actually planning to run two hurt races with this shoe at least. The first two, the Aya Loop Express, which is about seven miles, and then the Vice Tantalus Trail Run, which is about seven miles too. They're gonna be perfect for that kind of races. All right, these were all my thoughts about the Zina 2. All in all, it became one of my favorite shoes to run the short distance, technical terrain. I'm actually planning to go out today for a run and I'm just gonna probably take the Zina 2 and then just go out and push myself today after all the christmas food i need to get back in shape if you want to pick up one of the zinals you can go here locally at Yuloha. if you live in oahu hawaii they carry it so you can try them on and see if you like it or not if you just want to order online i put a link in the description it is an affiliate link so if you buy through that uh, it doesn't cost you anything but it will help out my channel beside that if you got out any information out of this video you can press the like button that will help out my channel and subscribe if not yet if you want to see more reviews and more adventures so see you next time aloha